Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Chris with arch-usa.com. Um, getting back into sneaker law, and of course, I'm on. Uh, of course, there's a lot to share, and I try not to give away so much of the book. I'm just making sure I hit these kind of quick points where I'm introducing the book to you, so you guys can potentially go out and buy your own copy. This is not sponsored. I'm doing this of my own volition. So this is not a hashtag ad. Um, going back, I'm doing that for a reason. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm on chapter five. And hence, chapter five, licensing and collaborations. We get to this part of the book. In the next two chapters here, five and six, I've gone through. I didn't put a lot of notes in here because this is kind of the earlier part of the book you had a lot of information that was really important that i thought was really important and licensing and collaborations is equally as important but for a completely different reason now a lot of you guys are starting your sneaker companies or your media companies and your businesses and you are encountering certain things that i've also encountered and it's really important that you understand licensing for a really big reason because here in the book, when we go into it, they get into licensing and the benefits of licensing. I did a licensing deal in uh, 2004 and I, I was a young basketball coach. I left my high school or my head coaching job and I moved to Memphis and I started a big website uh, called Center Court Basketball. And I was like, yo, you know what? Let me connect with some of these sneaker brands because I'm going to be building this website up to help send guys to college on basketball scholarships. Well, I went and I contacted a lot of different companies and I worked with a couple of them. And eventually I got to the point where I was like, yo, you know what? I can actually do this myself. So I looked to create my own shoe company at that time. And the shoe was over there on the wall, I had, on the cart. Um, and I ran into a company that was basically dormant. It wasn't doing anything. They were about to shut it down and it was going to be gone. So I got a licensing agreement. And um, it was great for a year and a half, made uniforms. And then it started to take off like a, like a rocket, man. I had a ton of high schools wearing the uniforms. I actually had two or three colleges wearing the shoes. I had the number one junior college in the country stop on the street in front of my house to pick up sneakers before they played in a tournament here in Memphis in Howard College. Shout out uh, Coach Sauter, who was working with me on that, uh, who's now at Seward. He's at Seward. So one sec. I was saying that I had the number one junior college in the country stop on the street, and they were um, picking up sneakers to wear in a tournament that they were playing here in Memphis. So it was a really great experience for me to license this brand that was basically getting ready to shut down. Now, why am I talking about that? Um, here you're talking about collaborations and they got a lot of great pictures in here. And then they go through and explain the different collaborations. But this is what's cool about that. Let's say you guys go out and um, Etonic, E-T-O-N-I-C. I know you guys don't remember that. Um, Hakeem Olajuwon wore Etonics, right? And um, Damon John, FUBU, Damon John, Shark Tank, he actually went out and acquired the license for Etonic. You guys could have went out and got that license for Etonic if you wrote the company. You could actually sit down and write one of the Chinese brands that are not very prominent in the US. You can write one of those brands and say, hey, I would love to bring your brand to the US. Can I sign an exclusive licensing deal with you guys and begin to work on presenting your product to the public? There are many different opportunities in licensing. And I really like this section of the book because they dive into a deep kind of look. They don't, it's not a deep, it's really a surface. They do look at a lot in regard to collaborations and collaborative efforts. But what I want to do is jump past the really pretty pictures and the fashion brand collaborations and stuff like that, jump past the pictures and get into why this section is important. And I wrote a long note for chapter five. You see it right here, this long note. So I'm gonna read it. Licensing and collaboration is important because my failure to have attorneys, uh, uh, to have an attorney and proper licensing led to my first bankruptcy. Now, 
I'm disclosing a lot here, and I don't mind disclosing a lot, man. I tell you guys how much I make on StockX. I'll tell you how much I made over the years on Amazon. I'll tell you that, yeah, I made tons of money, and I was very well off, but I also went bankrupt for the first time because of licensing issues. So when I was running the previous company, I never really had anything on paper. It was really just a handshake agreement, and I worked and operated that way because the brand was dying. Nobody was doing anything with it. So I made, uh, gosh, 1,200 pair of shoes. I made a case of shoes, right? And the shoes, once I went ahead and paid for it, the person that actually owned the brand, he moved back into play with the brand and he shifted the shoes from coming directly to Memphis to going to Portland. And that's what bankrupted me. Why? Because I had $22,000 set aside to get the shoes and make the shoes. And I made the shoes and everything was great. But he had the shoes stop in Portland. And when he had the shoes stop in Portland, he wanted to control the shipment of the shoes. He wanted to be re-engaged because the brand was performing really well. You're talking about the International Basketball League that was wearing the uniforms. Um, Gosh, nine different colleges at a time where all of these different colleges were signing with Adidas and Nike and all of this stuff. I had nine different colleges that were buying our uniforms because smaller colleges, they don't tend to get sponsored. They have to pay for their stuff. So they want really good pricing, but they want dope equipment. So you can jump into that role. Those opportunities are there. But for me, because I didn't take care of the financial or the, the paperwork aspect and licensing, and then I had to get the shoes moved from Portland to Memphis. It cost almost $2,000 to move, $2,000 to $3,000 to move those shoes from Portland to Memphis. And that was my marketing budget. At the same time, I was a tenure track professor and I found out they were paying another guy that had a, uh, had a master's degree. I have a terminal degree Basically, uh, MFA is similar to a PhD. It's called a terminal degree. And you know, we were paying this guy more than they were paying me, and he was teaching music, and I was teaching English. And I was pissed, right? And so I asked for a raise. And my wife, we had just gotten pregnant, so I needed a raise and all this other stuff. And they said something. They said one of the most disrespectful things at that college that anyone could ever tell an employee. And I walked out immediately. It was just bad timing across the board, but that extra three to $4,000 that I had for the 22,000, the purchase of the shoes was right around 18,000. That extra 4,000 just became sucked up in shipping the shoes from Portland to Memphis. And that all happened because of licensing. And then as the company began growing, I had an all American camp and it went fantastic. I had colleges there. I had a ton of guys go off and go to college after there to division ones and different places and to the Division twos and JUCOs and D3s. And it was just a beautiful website. Everything was fantastic. But I lost so much money in, the, money in the process of the shipping. And selling shoes is a slow process. It's not quick. They just don't go out the door as soon as you get them. So recouping the 18000 was going to be difficult to begin with. But it became more exacerbated because the guy came back in found some more buyers and those guys had more money and they assumed control of it, changed the name of the company and took all of the designs and everything else that was inside of it. And the company basically disappeared within a week. Now I, I kind of shortened explaining it, but this licensing section is important and they really focused on the shoes and stuff here, as opposed to really diving into explaining the traumatic things that can happen if your paperwork is not in order. So that's why that section is important. Section six, marketing. Marketing is one of those things where we always talk about the different aspects of how do you reach the consumer. And they got the four P's of the marketing and you know they go through in traditional marketing channels. The one important aspect that I wanted to get into for marketing, and you see this, and it's on online marketing, where they talk about digital and uh, display ads, banner ads, pop-up ads. And I wrote a note here and I said, this is important and critical to any business plan. Marketing is critical. 
uh, Instagram has leveled the playing field. You guys that are starting now, you're in a better position than I ever was. I came along 10 years too soon with both of my shoe companies. So with the first shoe company and now with Arch, which I have both of the, uh, the shoes over here on the rack, I was just too early in both instances. It is so much easier for you guys to build audiences now that it's, it's, it's you know, if you aren't really utilizing everything that you need in different forms of aspects of social media, you're kind of failing yourself. But you need to write it into your business plan, and that's what they talk about in this section. And uh, let's see. So Instagram has leveled the playing field considerably, enabling smaller companies to capture small segments of the population, and that small segment of the population will enable you to build a business. You can build a business with 500 loyal fans. 500 loyal fans, you can build a business. That's just a fact. It's true. So if you guys are really doing a good job in social media and on Instagram, and you are creating funnels to move the consumer through your sales channels, you can do something amazing. Now, um, this goes into social media a little bit more, and they talk about blogs, vlogs, and blogs and podcasts. And this is important here because I've, I've talked about this once before. I used a picture from a publishing release from Puma on my website. The person that took the original picture had licensed it to Puma, so Puma used it in their PR stuff. So I pulled it from the site and it gave permission on the site, here are high resolution images or here are these things. And a lawyer pursued me because I had a picture on my website of a person wearing Puma that was taken by a photographer. I had gotten the permission, well, the permission was there on the website. I hadn't written Puma and asked him for it. Now, I could have written someone over at Puma and said, hey, this guy is trying to come after me for using this picture. And I'm like, the picture isn't even that important on the website, but he has a right to do so. It's extremely important that you use pictures if you're vlogging and blogging, that you use pictures from uh, sources that you've contacted, or you need to make sure that they're releasing those pictures and making them publicly available on your website. Don't just assume that you can take something from someone else's website. You can't do that. The seventh chapter starts um, litigation. Now, I'm going to stop right here and end this video. Uh, once again, pick up Sneakalaw. I'm going to Sneakalaw. It's down in the uh, description. The link is in the description. But this is the most important section of the book. And if you look here, you see I've already started on it. And I've started taking notes. And I'm almost at the end. And I see now why they say 7 and 8. Because 7 and 8 are extremely important. Extremely important. It gets into litigation and the law and trademark and it goes more in depth than we did earlier when i took all of those notes earlier so that's it you guys that are watching this i appreciate you i know it doesn't have a lot of views but i don't necessarily care about a lot of views i care about the correct views you guys who are watching this and getting something from it i hope it's helping you out even if this view this video gets 30 views i'm cool with that if two of you guys saw this and it prevents you from going bankrupt and it prevents you from litigation in the future uh, Sneaker Law is a dope, fantastic book, right? Kenneth, Jared, you guys, this is amazing, and I can't wait to get into Section 7, which I've already started, and 8, which I think are easily the most important sections of this book. So that's it. See you guys on the next one. Uh, I didn't even have to use the computer. I will wrap with you guys on the next one. Peace.